Chag Sameach, dear BJ friends, friends from other communities in the United States. This is a great privilege and opportunity to be with you in this Tikkun Lel Shavuot that it is held this year under the circumstances of social distancing, but also that brings us together in new ways. Um, a way also to tell you how much many of us, including myself, of course, are thinking about you worried and praying for for hope and, and, and better times and for the time that we will join together in person and not only through uh, Zoom. So with my friends to the Israeli Rabbinate program, I'm, my duty is to talk about the commandments, um, one commandment, which is combined with another one, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, and, not, and thou shalt not make into thee a graven image, nor any manner of likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Lo yelecha Elohim acherim al panai, lo taase lecha pesel vechol tmuna asher bashamayim mimaal, vasher baaretz mitachat, vasher bamayim, the ban on making, on following other god, gods is conceived, is perceived usually as part of the biblical fight against idolatry. And we can understand that, of course, in the historical context. At the same time, there is something striking about the fact that right after this great, majestic, celebratory voice that says, I am the Lord in the first commandment who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And we know who are the people who were hearing this voice, people that were saved and saw miracles in their own eyes. Why would they follow other gods? So I would say this, the, 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 the voice here, is almost expecting a flaw, is almost expecting a fall into the pit of following other gods. Meaning that, first of all, there is awareness of the historical context, but also that there is awareness of something which is trans-historical, that is human, that is beyond the generation of the people who, who heard the voice. And in that respect, this call, you shall have no other gods before me, is, is amazing because it's a, a deep understanding that there is something about the human condition that is leading us to make things that are not gods into gods. They can be nationalism. They can be money. They can be other isms or small things, not the big isms. But the moment the principle of God is being brought to the world in this very, again, majestic and, and I would say universal way, that is the, exactly the moment that another principle is put just against it and with it. And that is beware. You might fall into, or you're almost expected. It's expected that you will fall into the, into the tendency, with this tendency to make things into gods. And you have a fight there. A constant need to crave, to, to, take, to take off this surface of metal that has been eroded, right? And all kinds of stuff have been put on this word God. Take it out. This is not a, a, a one moment success. This is a constant fight against our tendency to turn things into our gods. In that respect, I would say, and I would even say it bluntly, 
You have to be secular in order to be religious, truly religious. You have to be a skeptic. You have to disbelieve in order to believe, because if you believe too much, you will very quickly fall right after the first commandment into the second one. So you have to be secular in order to be religious. You have to work all the time very hard to keep away of our tendency to make th things that are not God's into God. Now this is also connected to the next statement. And that is you should have no, you should make no graven image or any manner. You, we know all that, you know, this kind of fight against statues and sometimes against all kinds of, you know, figures and icons. But the striking thing is that while the Bible and Chazal are fighting against icons, they are stressing the fact that there is a Tselem, that there is an icon, and that is the human which is an icon of God. Adam nivra betzelem Elohim. So while it seems contradictory that there is a fight against idolatry and at the same time insistence on the fact that we are made in the image of God, how can these two things can be combined together? So while, while there is insisting against, against making images, we, they stress the fact that we're, that we're made in the image of God, not only spiritually. In, in Chazal, it's also physically. And we know this beautiful statement of, of, of Hillel, that he goes to the bath, you know, and, and to wash himself and to, get, to take care of his body. And his, his disciples, his pupils are asking him, Hillel, what are you doing? He said, look, and he says, look on the statue of, the, of Caesar, when there is a servant, you know, taking off the dust out of him, and this is just a statue, and I am in the image of God, would I not take care of my body? So this is even corporal. We tend to think too much my Maimonidian. For Hazal, I think it's very corporal. So how can you stress the corporal, the corporal image of God in humans and, and fight against idolatry? And I think it's in this text. We should not take one person and make him a God also. It's the image of God in humans, in every human, and not in one human. That is why you shouldn't take one, person ima one person's image and turn it into a God, because then again you're falling into the pit of turning something which is not God into a God. The image of God in humans is universal. You don't have to be a modelist or a Caesar or a leader to have that within you. Or to have that in you. That is also, I think, such a beautiful statement of the Zohar where he says, Lo yelcha Elohim acherim al panai which is usually translated as uh, before me or over me. He says, Al Panai in Hebrew, Panai is a panim. Lo yelcha Elohim acherim ala panim sheli. You should always look on the way that the face, every person's face is mirroring God's image, not one particular face, not one beautiful, blonde, or not, a tall, short, skinny, fat, no. Lo yelcha Elohim acherim al panai. Al pnei Elohim on the face of God, of God, that are mirrored in our, in all our faces. So I wish us to be able to see the God in all our faces. And also I wish for myself, and I hope this is also a good wish for you, that we will be soon able to meet Panim El Panim, face to face, and to celebrate together.
חג שמח.